Hey class, welcome to our very first video lesson. We are starting the trigonometry chapter today. Uh, and for those of you who haven't taken pre-calculus, this is going to be new. So make sure you have your note packets ready, uh, print out the notes or get a piece of paper ready uh, to take notes along with me. All right, so we're gonna start today with angles and radian measure of angles. Uh, we have a basic angle here. Uh, we have the vertex, which is this point at B. We have our initial side, which is that one, and then our terminal side, which is this one. Uh, an angle is in standard position if the vertex is at the origin of a rectangular coordinate system. That just means an x-y axis. And the initial side has to be on the positive x-axis. That's when you know your angle is in standard position. So we have positive and negative angles. Uh, positive angles are these ones, and they go from the initial side counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise to the terminal side, and negative angles go clockwise from the initial side to the terminal side. Uh, up until now, you should be used to uh, seeing angles in degrees. So let's just uh, name and review our angles in degrees. This one is a cute angle. Aw, it's so cute. Uh, and we have the angle going from zero to 90 degrees. Uh, here we have our right angle where theta is 90 degrees. And if you're wondering what that symbol thing that I'm writing is, this is called theta. Oops spelled that wrong, theta, and it's just a, a Greek letter that we use for angles. Uh, here we have an obtuse angle theta, which is anything between 90 degrees and 180 degrees, and then we have our straight angle, which is where theta equals 180 degrees. And one full rotation of a circle measured in degrees is 360 degrees all the way around the circle. So we're not gonna use degrees very much. Actually, in trigonometry, we prefer to write our angles in radians. Uh, so radians is just another form of measuring angles. Um, and this is our formula for our angle. It's the length of the arc, which is S, divided by the radius. You're gonna wanna memorize this, um, but don't worry too much. It's, it's a lot easier than, than what it looks like to use this. Uh, so here, if we look at our angles, if we want to talk about our radian measures, uh, what I like to do is start with the fact that, and you can see it right here, pi equals 180 degrees. So if we think about our straight angle here, this is just going to be the angle pi. Uh, the angle measure is, is pi. Uh, here, a 90 degree angle is the same as pi over two. And so this angle is gonna be anything between zero and pi over two. And this one's gonna be anything between pi over two and 180. You don't need to, or I'm sorry, not 180, that's in degrees. We're talking radians. We're gonna write pi. Oh, it's hard to switch your brain back and forth and it definitely is an adjustment. So we have to practice just like learning any new language. Um, and then if we think about if 180 degrees is pi, then 360 degrees, one full rotation is gonna be two pi. And if we think about our, our circumference, this actually ties in with circumference. Circumference of a circle is two pi times the radius. So if the radius is one, then the circumference all the way around is two pi. And in what we call our unit circle, the radius is always one. So all of this kind of connects together. Uh, so we're gonna be starting here with converting from degrees to radians. Just like when we learn a new language, uh, we need to learn how to translate between the language we speak and the new language we're learning. Uh, so here we have 30 degrees, 90 degrees, and 135 degrees. You can take any angle in degrees oops, 30 degrees, and multiply it by pi over 180 degrees. So kind of in a sense, what we're doing is 
I'll erase that three there, is we're canceling out the degrees. So we put degree on top, degree on bottom, so that the degrees cancel out. And then we just simplify. 30 goes into 180, 60, or six times. <laughs> Yay, math. Six times. Uh, so this is going to end up being pi over 6. And then um, we've got 90 degrees, so 90 degrees times pi over 180. 90 goes into 180 two times, so this is pi over 2. Negative 135 degrees times pi over 180 degrees. So how many times, let's see, if we divide by 5, I really should have gotten my calculator ready for this. Uh, we can actually divide our, oops, our 135 and 180 by 45, and we get 3 and 4. So this is going to end up being a negative 3 pi over 4. And drawing each angle in standard position, so just so we know kind of where that pi over 6 is, standard position, again, remember, means I've got my, oops, oh, geez. Whoops. Okay. I have my vertex at the origin. My initial side of the angle is on the positive x axis. And then pi over 6, you can think of it like 30 degrees, would be right there. 90, oops, change back to my black pen here. There's my axis, my angle, standard position here, and terminal side here so that we have a right angle. That's going to be pi over 2. And then negative 135 degrees, so or negative 3 pi over 4. Again, we have our vertex at the origin, initial side on the positive x-axis, and then negative angles. So positive angles go counterclockwise. Negative angles go clockwise. So we're going to go negative 3 pi over 4, which is this direction at negative 3 pi over 4. So you're going to want to practice not only converting your angles from degrees to radians, but also drawing it on an axis. Uh, we're going to go the other direction, converting from radians to degrees. Um, we're going to just take our pi over 3 radians, and instead of multiplying by pi over 180, we're going to flip that fraction over. Multiply by 180 over pi. I like to remember it this way because the pi's cancel out, which is nice. So kind of remember when we write it in degrees, we're not really going to see pi anymore. Uh, and then 3 goes into 180, 60 times. And don't forget the degrees symbol. It is important when we have degrees to have that degree symbol. Uh, negative 5 pi over 3 radians times 180 degrees over pi. Again, those pi's cancel out. Uh, 3 goes into 180, 60 times, and negative 300 degrees is what we end up with there. Uh, now, these ones, are they feel a little bit weird, especially when you start getting used to radians because they don't have any pies in them. But remember, pi is just a number. Pi is 3.14. So pi over 3 is just 3.14 divided by 3, which is just a number. So 1 radian, 1 is also just an angle in radians. If I multiply that by 180 divided by pi, and I use my calculator to do 180 divided by pi, I get approximately 57.3 degrees. Uh, same with 2.3 radians. We multiply by 180 degrees divided by pi. Oops, I forgot my zero. Uh, divided by pi. So again, we're just going to do this multiplication. We do 2.3 times 180 and then divide that by 3.14 or pi and I get 131.8 degrees. And then we can draw these angles in standard position again. So we have our vertex, our initial side, and then pi over 3 is going to be just about right there. Negative angles, remember, go the other direction. They go clockwise. So here's our vertex, our initial side, and then negative 300. Oh my gosh, you're going to go all the way around to about there. And that's going to be our negative 300 degrees or negative 5 pi over 3. Um, we've got 
one radian, I know, again, it sounds kind of weird, especially when you get used to pi, but one radian, 57.3 degrees, is just somewhere about right there. So this is just one, oops, one radian. And you can write RAD if you want for radians. You don't have to. Sometimes it's nice to see it. And then our last one, we have 131.8 degrees. That is less than 180 degrees. I base everything off of, um, so this is 2.3 radians. <coughs> I like to base everything off of my 90, if we think of 90 degrees here, 180 degrees here, 360 degrees, 270 degrees. I kind of base everything off of that. And I don't care if it's exactly in the right position. I just want it to be in the right quadrant. Okay, and then you can see here, I have a little note for you guys. If you look in your books on page 550, there's a really nice table and angle circles uh, for you to look at there. All right, Whew, last page. So two angles with the same initial and terminal sides, but possibly different rotations or directions are called co-terminal angles. This is gonna be important for you guys to practice. So finding co-terminal angles means I'm gonna take the angle I'm given, and I'm gonna find another angle in the exact spot, but maybe a different rotation. So for example, where is 420 degrees? Well, if you notice 420 uh, degrees is more than one rotation. So I can find a coterminal angle by taking the rotation out of it. If I take 420 to minus 360, if I subtract an entire rotation, 360 degrees, 420 minus 360 is going to be 60 degrees. This would be a coterminal angle. It's going to be the same angle, and I wanted it to be a positive angle less than, whoops, that was supposed to say 360 degrees that is coterminal with each of the following, <coughs> or 2 pi, depending on if it's in degrees or radians. If they give you the, uh, the problem in degrees, then I'll expect you to write your answer in degrees. So here... We've got, uh, this is actually less than uh, zero rotations. That's kind of weird to say, but it went, you know, negative angles. So if we want to get that into our positive angles less than 360, I can add one whole rotation. If I take an angle in a circle, say I'm at negative 120 degrees, is somewhere about right there. So this is negative 120 degrees. If I go from here and I go all the way around 360 degrees, I'm right back to where I started and I get the exact same angle, which is what we're looking for here. We're looking for that co-terminal angle, so the same exact angle, just maybe a whole other rotation above or below. So now if I have 360 and I subtract that 120, I end up with uh, 240 degrees. So that would be my co-terminal angle uh, that's positive, less than one rotation. Uh, let's see. Let's look at some radian measurements. So 17 pi over 6. You have a couple options. You can convert this to degrees first and figure out what it would be based on degrees. Or you can keep it in radians because I want to encourage you guys to really try to work with radians. Just like when you're learning a new language, you don't want to keep relying back on the language you already know. You want to practice the new one. So here, remember, um, one rotation, one rotation, rotation is 360 degrees or two pi radians. So I can add or subtract two pi just like I added and subtracted 360 for examples A and B. So here, this is going to be greater than one rotation for 17 pi over 6. So I'm going to want to subtract my rotation, which is 2 pi. Remember, when we add or subtract fractions, we need the same denominator. So I'm just going to multiply it by 6 over 6 to get that same denominator. So I have 17 pi over 6 minus 12 pi over 6, which is just going to give me 5 pi over 6. And there's my coterminal angle in radians. So similarly, negative pi over 12, I'm going to add a 2 pi because I don't want it to remain a negative angle. I want a positive angle. And then I want that same denominator. So negative pi over 12 plus 24 pi over 12 gives me 23 
pi over 12 as my coterminal angle. All right, so make sure, again, when you're doing the homework that you're looking at these notes and, and using the examples. Okay, we've made it to the last example here. So find the length of a circular arc. So we can use this formula again. Remember, I told you you need to memorize this one. Uh, it will show up on your test, so make sure you practice with this. Uh, we're going to find the length of the arc of a circle, which is S. So a circle has a radius of 10 inches. Find the length of the arc intercepted by a central angle of 120 degrees. Okay, so we have this formula, but if you remember, when you look back at the first page, it said that specifically theta equaled S over R radians. So that means if we use this formula, which we have to use, this is only radians. We can't put degrees there. So the first step we need to do is convert to radians. So I'm going to take my 120 degrees and multiply by pi over 180 degrees to convert this to radians. So let's see, my zeros cancel. 12 and 18 can be divided by 6, makes 2 and 3. So I end up with 2 pi over 3 radians. That's going to be my new angle theta. So if I plug this into my equation, 2 pi over 3 equals s over my radius, which is 10. Now I can solve for s by multiplying both sides by 10. So if I multiply by 10 on both sides, it cancels that out. And now I end up with s equals 20 pi over 3. Remember, this is a length of the arc of the circle, so we have inches as our units. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed your first video lesson. Remember, if you have any questions on your homework, uh, to join one of my video conferences or message me, and we can set up a video appointment. All right. Bye.